division, there is balance in everything. Sexual rights and responsibilities in Islam. What does the wife like to see her husband wearing? To fulfill the base desires of your spouse, there is a charity in it. So, the so Sahaba it's an act of worship. It's basically. an act of worship with the right intention. People say, uh, you know, you can't marry for sex. Can I say no to my husband if he requested me for, yes. you know, intimacy? Vaginism is for those just who don't know what is the conditions. Sometimes they say, fix him, don't sleep with him. So now we want to shift to the ethical boundaries regarding sexual activities in Islam. Are there any prohibited acts that husbands and wives who are watching us now be careful of? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, our beautiful religion, Islam, is the perfect way of life that was intended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and chosen for His creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-Islam adina. This day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you and chosen Islam to be your way of life. A way of life that does not only care about spirituality or the ritualistic acts of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had imposed upon us, but it intervenes in every aspect of our existence, from the minute we wake up in the morning to the last minute of the day. And that includes acts like sexual intimacy with halal spouses. And this is exactly our topic of this video, inshallah ta'ala, sexual rights and responsibilities in Islam. And joining me, my beloved brothers, my beloved elders and mentors and so many other things, Dr. Muhammad Salah of Huda TV and Mufti Ismail Mink, who does not need any introduction. Barakallah Fiyum, Jazakum Wa for making this meeting possible. But let me begin by asking Dr. Muhammad Salah and Mufti Mink to give a brief introduction about the importance of this topic. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala nabihi wa mustafa wa ba'an. In our religion, there is balance in everything. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regulated the relationship between the spouses, the rights and the duties, He phrased it in the most perfect and wise way. The Almighty Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Lahunna, the pronoun refers to the wives. مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Which means... The wives also do have rights similar to those which are due upon them. So mutual rights and obligations. So normally people speak about, you know, the needs of the husband, the needs of the husband. What about the needs of the uh, wife? Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhumah said upon reading this ayah in his commentary, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ He said, Wallahi, إِنِّي لَأَتَزَيَّنُ لِزَوْجَتِي كَمَّا أُحِبُّ أَنْ تَتَزَيَّنَ لِي Zina means adornment. In the case of a woman, you like your wife to wear makeup, perfume, uh, sleepwear, you know? Uh, likewise, what does the wife like to see her husband wearing, smelling, looking nice? So he used to adorn himself. The zina of the man may be wearing the kuhat, wearing the nice perfume, uh, dressing up neatly taking a shower, so he's required to fulfill his duties towards his, right, uh, his wife in this regard as much as he likes his wife to smell neat and to be ready for him. We'll talk about it, but I'd like to hear from uh, my brother Mink. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Many people don't like to talk about this topic taboo. They consider it something that, you know, is very difficult to speak about. Fortunately, we are responsible to speak about these topics. We have to in a respectful way. The Prophet ﷺ addressed it in a very beautiful manner. The word used is so respectful, you know, to fulfill the base desires of your spouse. There is a charity in it. So, the so Sahaba it's an act of worship. It's basically. an act of worship with the right intention. The Sahaba were obviously surprised 
that they asked a question, O Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if we fulfill our base desires, would we get a reward for that? So he asked again in a question to say, do you, do, do you see if you were to fulfill it in haram, would you be sinful? They said, yes. Well, he said, well, then if you do it in the halal proper way, then you would achieve a reward. reward. So that's one thing we need to understand. Uh, when a person gets married, people say, uh, you know, you can't marry for sex. I mean, then, sorry, why did you get married? I mean, it's one of the main things. It's not, it's not perhaps the factor, but it's the, one of the main factors. Part of the package, yeah. Yes, it's one of the main parts of the package. In fact, so much so that if a person is unable to satisfy his spouse either way, then they, they have a right, the other spouse has a right to uh, file for a nullification of it because you can't fulfill my rights. It's important. I mean, I protected myself from haram for what? In order that I get the halal. If I'm not going to get the halal, this is why the Prophet ﷺ says, under certain circumstances, you could be sinful for not facilitating something that is absolutely halal because where do you expect them to go? A lot of the times we get people saying, you know what, um, I, I won't give uh, in to my husband. Imagine if the husband said the same thing about the spouse. I won't give in. Why talk like this? You are married. Part of that marriage in Islam includes the issue of intimacy. It's part of the, the aqid. It includes the intimacy. And so, we're going to unpack all these issues in details, inshallah. So we will we unpack structure. the package. Yes, we have to unpack this in great details inshallah. because this so, video... I think it's going to be very important for people who have those doubts. Can I say no to my husband if he requested me for yes. you know, intimacy and all these questions? We want to unpack it in detail. So the two things I wanted to mention as an introduction. One is consider it an act of worship with the correct intention. Go out of your way to fulfill it in order not only to please your spouse either way, but in order to please Allah and to earn a reward. And secondly, is that make sure you understand that you have to make an effort, you have to you have to try, you have to, like Dr. Muhammad said, cleanse yourself, keep yourself clean, neat, you know, someone that the person you are married to would desire. So you, you look okay, you're prim and prop, you don't just do anything and everything that would uh, make you look so unkempt, for example. And may Allah make it easy. So let's start with the responsibilities of the husband towards his wife. What are the roles, rights, and responsibility when it comes to sexual intimacy about husbands fulfilling that for his wife? Well, one might be surprised to realize that uh, our religion discussed that in depth. So for instance, the sexual satisfaction is a requirement for both. My brother Mink was talking about that the wife would have the right to nullify the marriage or demand fasch or divorce in case that there is a dysfunctioning. Mm. Guess what? Marriage itself undergoes the five religious ahkam, plural of hukm. So from the beginning, marriage could be compulsory, could be recommended, could be mere halal, lawful, could be disliked, and it could be haram. So marriage could be haram from the beginning. Somebody wants uh, to get married, but it's haram for him to get married. Like what? Why is that? Yeah. Somebody who's been diagnosed with dysfunctioning, erectile dysfunctioning for innocence, he cannot have the ability to have sexual relations. Mm. So we say, is it treatable? Well, doctors said, unfortunately not. That means you will marry a woman and you will cause a harm, a great harm to her. So you will be lying to her, you will be deceiving her and her family, and you'll be counting on, you know, that she just married a decent man, a rich man, or a righteous man. What about the uh, sexual uh, desire? What about the sexual needs? What about the desire to have a child? Oh, we'll go for uh, in uh, vitro fertilization or whatever. In this case, it is not honest. So it is haram for a person who is diagnosed with this kind of dysfunctioning and he knows that he will not have the capacity to have a sexual intercourse 
to get married, to, the, to propose and get married, then deceive this innocent woman. So the man must tell this in advance, like if he had erectile dysfunction, he, he knows that he can't function sexually. Is it permissible for the wife to say, okay, I accept, and they get married based on that? Obviously, that we're talking about average people. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, people get married once they grow up at marriageable age, and they need to get married mm -hmm. in order to lower their gaze, to satisfy the sexual desire, to start forming a family, to have children, right? We're not talking about elders who, this concept is not really a priority. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm marrying somebody to be with me at home, to take care of me whenever I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm sick. Uh, or to um, to manage my business. No, we're talking about what most people get married for, no. which is to enjoy this intimacy in a lawful fashion. Amen. And that's why the hadith uh, that my brother Mink referred to, when the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna fi ahadikum sadaqa, the companions were surprised. Their eyes grew wild and said, what? Would you have sex and uh, be rewarded? He said, look at the analogy. He said, what, what do you think if somebody happened to have sexual relations outside marriage, out of woodlock, in an illicit relationship? Doesn't he or she deserve to be punished? They said, certainly, because he's committing adultery. He said, for avoiding the haram and pursuing the halal, he or she will be rewarded. Alhamdulillah. So we have to acknowledge that. Mainly we get married for one of those reasons. So it must be fulfilled. If somebody knows from the beginning mm. that he has this kind of dysfunctioning, he's diagnosed, uh, he tried to be treated, but uh, it didn't work out. In this case, it is not permissible to propose to a family and a girl uh, and deceive them. Um, you know, in case that the, there is a woman who just want to be with a man, to have a family, uh, somebody to sponsor her, and she doesn't mind. She's not even interested in such a relationship. That's a different story. Okay. But under regular circumstances, that would be deception. You cannot hide it. Yes. You cannot hide it. So to end this point, if somebody was addicted to pornography, which lately now research have shown that people who are consumed by pornography could also suffer from what is known now porn-induced erectile dysfunction, mm -hmm. is the man advised advice to tell his potential spouse before the marriage that he's addicted to porn and that he needs support and so on? When this question comes to me a lot. We're, talk, we're talking about a completely different story, mm. which is a person who have complete dysfunction, mm. cannot okay. even function. Mm. A, a person who is actually addicted to porn is on the other side. Why? He easily finds himself aroused. He has an erection and he masturbates and he relieves himself you know, but he does it in haram, okay? He needs counseling, he needs to be treated, but he's functioning. And that's why he has the desire versus somebody who doesn't have the desire, doesn't have the capacity. So these are two different things. Okay. All right, so we'll move now to... Can I yes, add something? So please. if, the, if the, this person who is dysfunctional, if he is getting help, say, for example, you married and you didn't know, Maybe a guy, I've come across a case where the guy himself says, I didn't know I was like this, but I've realized that I am, you know, uh, out of order, basically. Mm -hmm. So the question I pose to him is, are you prepared to seek medical help? He said, yes. So his wife said, well, I'm prepared to give him six months to solve his problem. That was very kind of her. And he, he went to seek medical help and it started helping him. So they managed to salvage the marriage. Now, people looked at this woman and said, how dare you break a marriage just because this guy cannot? And she said, look, I was told in Islam, I have a right. Mm. Don't look down on me. It's so that, difficult for families. The next, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then th there is the opposite. I don't know if you're going to discuss that, the vaginismus problem that we have, where it's not just a man who has erectile dysfunction. There are a lot of women out there who, are, uh, who have a phobia of being intimate. They just cannot be intimate. So the same what we tell the guy, in those cases, mostly you only find out after marriage, right? True. 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 Right? So we tell the guy, look, go easy, be patient, seek help, seek counseling, and inshallah, it, it's then up to you how long you want to prolong it. I know people who've prolonged it for some years. And then when, when everything was okay, they are so happy and married and with children and so on. But 
Other people cannot bear patience for more than a few months. They'll say, listen, mm -hmm. she doesn't want to, me to be intimate with her. Uh, what will I do? I need to save myself from haram. I, I need to do something. So Islam, listen, these rules are not from me. They're not from you or Dr. Muhammad. This is Islam. Islam allows you to say, listen, you say, I'm so sorry. We tried to work it. I can't live with you. And unfortunately, we have to part ways. Mm -hmm. You're not sinful As to a matter of fact, uh, you know, we're talking about when one of the two spouses is having a major complaint. Mm. But if both are okay with that, there is no yes. problem. Yes. Vaginismus, for those just who don't know what is the condition, so this is usually a contraction of the muscles where a woman experiences painful sexual intimacy with her husband, which makes her also hate the muscles whole relationship. Has been. Yes, so I have, I have some cases where the wife tells me that I, I think this whole process is very disgusting. I would rather die and not do it. Mm. So I say, but uh, your husband have needs. She said, I don't mind if he wants to get married. So she actually presented the solution. Sauda mm. binti May Allah be pleased with her. Who, one of the mothers of the believers. She was the woman whom the Prophet Sallallahu married after Khadija died. She was old already. And now when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam grew older and he moved to Medina and he has younger wives, so she said, look, uh, since I don't have any need in this regard, I'm giving my night to Aisha. Aisha. Anha. So there was a mutual understanding. Hey, keep me as a wife and I'm not interested in this relationship, but I can give it away to somebody else. So there is a common understanding, no problem. The problem that we're discussing, if one of these spouses have a complaint and the complaint against the other spouse is causing a harm. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said in the sound hadith, harm should not be inflicted nor reciprocated. Mm. So in case of a harm, like, you know, we will assume that the man is innocent, naive, and he didn't know. Then there's something called inna, born with inna, where he can never actually have a, an erection. You know, or uh, his genitals are very little. It happens. Mm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, help everyone. Amen. But if it happens, and then on the night of consummating the marriage, they both found out. The fuqaha said we give him one year. To improve. Or to improve. One year, why? For the four seasons to pass by summer, winter, fall, spring. Maybe it is emotional. Maybe because it is a cold weather, the hot weather. And if he's not functioning, in this case, we'll do fasq. There is something called fasq, and there is something called talaq, and there is something called khula. Mm -hmm. What if she says, I can't wait for one year? Well, in this case, you have all the right to demand divorce. If he refuses, you can do musalaha on khula. It doesn't mean that you got stuck with him for one year against your will. But what the fuqaha suggested under regular circumstances. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So now what, what are the rights, responsibilities, and roles of the wife towards her husband when it comes to sec sexual intimacy? What do you mean? Well, uh, when it comes to sexual intimacy, obviously the man is getting married like I said, one of the main purposes also, he's going to look after his family, there's going to be reproduction for the sake of Allah, if Allah wills, he's going to be providing for her and so on. But regarding this particular department, he, uh, she needs to make sure that she protects him from uh, going towards haram no. because of her. So what that means is, some people will go for haram no matter what you've given them and what you've done for them. Mm. But if it is a result of your action, or your refusal, for example, without any reason, you would then be guilty in the eyes of Allah of not fulfilling this man's rights to the degree that you share a part of his sin. Wow. So, right? So we won't say that you are guilty of the crime, but you share a part of the sin because had he fulfilled his halal desire, he would not have needed to even consider haram. We're talking of... And that's halal right as well. It's, it's, halal it's, a, right. Only, yes. it's a right, correct. So this is why a lot of the times nowadays you have many feminists who talk. And, and it's open. They say, I don't need to be intimate. What's the issue? Well, in the eyes of Allah, there is an issue. The reason is, what, the reason is quite simple. That this whole issue of you getting married, and you know, they say tying the knot, is in order to be able to do certain things in a halal way 
if you are going to block that, you are defying the entire purpose of the whole marriage. Why did you get married in, uh, married in the first place? So you would be held liable in the eyes of Allah. Similarly, if it was the opposite way around, women would cry foul to say, listen, this guy's not satisfying me. We've had hundreds of cases come to us, he's not satisfying me. Mm -hmm. This guy's like this, he's like that, he's gay, or whatever they say. Mm -hmm. End of the day, we have to tell him, hey, listen, you need to fulfill the rights. Why is it that when it's the other way around, we think it's okay? It's okay. Yeah. He needs to fulfill my rights, but I don't need to fulfill his rights. What do you mean? And that was it my goes, next question, yeah. It yeah. goes two ways. Yeah. Uh, Habibi, it goes two ways. And this is such a topic, people don't talk about it. So if there is any woman out there who thinks that I, I just have a choice completely in Islam, then unfortunately the Islam you're following is not the same Islam that came with the Prophet so does that mean that women cannot say no when the husband invites her to fulfill that Before desire? I answer this question, I'd like to share with the viewers the reason we came up with this uh, edition and this episode is we have seen a lot of extreme discussion in this regard. On both sides? On both sides. So we figured that it is our duty towards the to Ummah exactly to unplug to unpack to explain to them both spouses rights and obligations in this regard and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a woman should never say no to her husband whenever he invites her to bed why basically what ignites the desire because i go out i work and mingle with women a lot of women around wearing tight clothes yoga pants and whatever and no matter how much I try to lower my gaze, I'm exposed to a lot of temptations. The Prophet ﷺ said, go home. When you go home and you satisfy your sexual desire with your lawful spouse, then they all become the same. Mm. You know, after you finish eating, what did you just eat? Well, I ate cheese and bread. I ate cereal. But alhamdulillah, I'm full. Now they're serving rib eye steak. Well, I'm full, I can't eat anymore. Why? Because you're full. Likewise. So you if you... remembered me. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> so likewise, once you enjoy your sexual relation with your spouse, even if there is a woman in the nude, you're not interested because the shahwa is not ignited. And that's why... It's quenched. Basically, exactly. it's quenched. And that's why we need to bring to the attention of our beloved viewers, it is not about sexual discharge it is not about hit a run uh, I just gotta get get it done no it's about the love the compassion and mawadda or rahma kisses hugs cuddling saying sweet words they call it uh, foreplay by the way it, it is foreplay let me tell you one thing <laughs> One thing I discussed with you before. Sheikh, we learned from you how to use, <laughs> how to use these words. No, so the, so the basic idea Listen is to, to fulfill this. each other's desire, not yes. to care only about it's fulfilling your own. It's not only the sexual, also mm. the emotional The emotional desire. part, yeah. Why? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the hadith is narrated by Umm Salama, who is Umm Salama, one of the Prophet's wives. And she was an older woman, but she still had needs. And uh, one day, she slipped out of bed. So the Prophet Sallallahu called her back and said, have you started your menses? She said, yep. And that's why she slipped away. He said, come back. Just wrap an izar around your waist. Around your waist and down. And then they cuddled, they kissed, they hugged, and they shared bed. So this is permissible? Oh, no, no, not only permissible. Watch this. Whenever a woman is in her PMS, on her period, she is much more in need than the man mm. whenever he's aroused. And that's why she needs his support, hugging, kissing, and cuddling in, in, in bed, even though there is no sexual intercourse. The romance. Yes. The romance. MashaAllah, JazakAllah khairan. Somebody would say, Ya'ni the Prophet Sallallahu had already nine wives. I mean, was it really like a pressing need that uh, he has to tell Ummu Salama uh, or one of his wives to take off the top and stay with the Izar? I'll tell you why. It wasn't because of him wanting to fulfill his sexual desire because he had other wives. Yeah. It is because of satisfying Her the design. needs of this wife wow. who's going to be there for seven days 
in the PMS experiencing hormonal dis uh, changes and she needs this moral support. Allah. Needs that much romance. Yeah. So this is something that we advise all men. You have to go an extra mile. You have to think about it. Allah, very, very important point. Listen because to this. Families are being destroyed because of this. Nah, listen to this. Allahu Akbar. When the man comes home and says, leave everything in your hand, come to, the, uh, come to bed. Yeah, hey man, what is wrong with you? I'm cooking. Just take a bath quickly or the perfume. Why? Uh, he was about to commit haram or he was contemplating haram. Okay, so now you know that whenever there is a person need, he need to fulfill it in halal. What about her? What about her? Yeah. The thing is, you're vocal and you can talk about it, but her shyness will prevent her from bringing it up. Mm. So you have to go an extra mile and don't wait for her to express it. Take the initiative. Keep that in mind. Even if you're tired, even if you're exhausted, you know, you have to be uh, sensitive to her needs. You know, another thing is regarding the, the build up to intimacy. A lot of men, uh, the complaints we get, two major things. One is there is no build up and two is he does his thing and he leaves us high and dry, basically. Mm -hmm. So what, what is recommended, even from an Islamic perspective, like Dr. says, you, the muqaddimat, that thing which leads up to the intimacy is equally important. Mm. To say good words, you know, to praise, even in the day, you look at your spouse, it's just you and her, and you just say, wow, you're looking good. And the other way too, a lot of women are guilty of not admiring their husbands to their faces. Mm. And in this case, you can use, you know, words that m are not used outside. You're looking hot, you know. How, who can I tell that to? A limited, limited, limited usage of that word. So all these words are very, very important and the build up to it. You don't just uh, come in almost like, you know. We uh, talk about even after play now. So you say foreplay and after play. Foreplay so and after play. play as a matter of fact, discuss yes. this matter. Yes. For instance. And, uh, that's what I was going to say, yeah. that if you have basically Premature ejaculation. Yes, yeah. You call it premature ejaculation or if you have reached that point of climax. orgasm. The climax. Before the wife reached make their sure climax. That you, make sure yeah. that you, you don't just uh, plug out until she has also been satisfied. Mm. It's a very important factor. A lot of women, a lot of women actually complain and it's so hard for them to talk about it, to say, you know what, what's there in this? I mean, what did I get? I, I'm, I've been married for so, so. And you start thinking, this guy needs help. And so who's going to help him? Because he's a big man. Mm -hmm. And big men don't like to, uh, to be told is. because there's a pride, you know? Yes. The catch That's is why to always put yourself in your spouse's position. Whenever you have needs, you call her. Then you need to think about her needs as well. Yes. And do whatever it takes, medication. Uh, there are some aphrodisic foods okay, which will stimulate you, perfumes, makeup, whatever, as long as you're using something which is lawful, lawful, halal. You know, some people go um, to the extreme where they use what is not lawful mm -hmm. in order to stimulate themselves or stimulate their partners. We have to put limits and understand that haram is Haram. Obvious, yeah. Like pornography. Some people want to use porn and they to claim no, spice it's just up to and spice up. Yeah. Absolutely forbidden. Yeah. And subhanAllah, the man will earn double the punishment because he's in a charge for his wife. And a man who would allow himself to share with his wife, the mother of his kids, his lawful wife, to view something like that the is not a man. Kind of a mess, is huh? not a man. Hmm. He is not a man. I, I don't want to say uh, a, a term which is very vulgar, but he is not a man. And the wife has a right to say no in those, in those the, circumstances. The wife has the right to divorce him wow. if he listen, insists girls, on listen. something like that because he is not a man, let alone being a Muslim and a righteous man. But unfortunately, due to the widespread of the porn materials, easily accessible even on one's phone some people think this way and this and is how they go extreme because he wants his lawful spouse to act and function like a prostitute right. she's not gonna do that why because she haven't been there she didn't see what you've been seeing she doesn't know what you're demanding so halal is halal and haram is haram even in the sexual positions you know what is lawful is in the orifice where 
a woman would conceive and have a child, but the rear orifice, 100% untouchable, 100% is unlawful mm -hmm. and it is haram. Yes, we receive calls. Some sisters say in private that my husband is trying to convince me in some madahib it is okay to do so. Let me assure you 100% it is not mentioned anywhere by any Muslim that this is lawful. It's filthy, it is dirty, it is disgusting, and it's a major sin which requires punishment and a kafara. But excuse me, Ani Sheikh Mayani, let me act here the, what I hear from, you know, let me be the devil advocate, okay? But what if the wife is not in the mood, yeah? And we okay. all have those moods. So, so no matter said, what we do, no, you, you, don't, you don't forget this question, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, so because we wanted can to I, see, can I just before just, we speak about the mood, one no, thing before I forget, please. Like we wanted to, after we discuss about the mood part, we wanted to see uh, what are the conditions or what are the circumstances for which a woman may actually say no, according to the Sharia. Habibi, we'll let me that. let me tell you one thing. There is a difference between a woman who's been working hard all day, or the son didn't go to sleep, or the baby or she was putting him or her to sleep, and she's really exhausted. Oh, she's not and, well, she's sick. Uh, and, and, and she's not well, she's sick. And a woman who's trying to run away from such a relationship. So she keeps coming up with excuses. Completely different conditions and cases. Sometimes they say, fix him, don't sleep with him. No. Sometimes the friends, they tell the wife of the guy wow. that fix him, don't sleep with him. Not realizing she's actually uh, doing the wrong thing in the eyes of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because that's not how you fix, you know, fix someone. Him, yeah. No, a woman doesn't have the right, whenever she's healthy, whenever she's capable, to avoid sharing bed with the husband, or if she is upset with him, having a misunderstanding or a discord, to refuse sharing bed with him. And we use the word sharing bed to refer to the sexual relations. If a woman does so, then by Allah, she is, Allah is angry with her. That is stated in the sound hadith. Because somehow she is alluring him or inviting him to fall in haram. And they might say, no, you know, uh, he must control himself. He must be this. And why must he do that? And why? You just put yourself in his shoes so for a, a little around. minute. And this is very important to be able to fulfill each other's and rights. And I think we, we began by discussing yes. the woman's right before. in this regard before the man. The man's, exactly. And to put yourself in his shoes and he should put your, himself in your shoes. And this is, that will solve all the problems because a man is wired differently from a woman. The world can say what it wants, but the wiring is different. So the, the thinking is different, the emotions are different, physically there is a difference, so many things are different. And yes, there is a lot that is common, but in those differences you need to think that what does she need, what, or what does he need, and why does he need it, and look at this and so on. Because you could be solving, you could be thinking you're solving a problem by abstaining, not realizing you're creating a bigger problem. So that's why when Allah says something is haram, it's the mercy of Allah. People look at the sheikhs and say, ah, this guy here, you know, he's uh, whatever, he misogynist and he's like this. In actual fact, when Allah has laid a, a law or declared that this is haram or this is punishable, there is always a merciful reason behind it. Always. So a lot of people in today's world, they fall prey to what they watch, what they see, a group of friends who tell them things, and they don't realize that system is not actually the system that your faith teaches you. Whenever she refuses and she doesn't have a valid reason. Hmm. If a woman is sick, if a woman is experiencing difficulty or hardship for whatever reason, that's a valid reason. But she was asking the husband for a diamond ring. She wanted to go on a vacation here and there. Or and go said, out with her friends for the night. And, and he said, can't afford it, or he refused. And now, honey, let's go to bed. She says, no. Like, you know, you, you refuse to give me what I wanted, so I will refuse to give you what you needed. In this case, yes, the hadith is definitely applicable. Mm -hmm. 
but it is not applicable when the woman is sick. And that's why I said we differentiate. As a husband, I know whenever my wife had a tough day, I say let go this time. You understand? Mm. But the cases that we receive all the time, when the wife doesn't want to, she barely gives him this right. I mean, he struggles with it and he feels like he was on a battlefield. She's not interested. In this case, Allah has given him a way out. But she is saying, no, you cannot marry another woman. I'm going to report you. Go for my dead body. I, so it's like, you know, you want him to be chaste. You want him not to marry other than you. And meanwhile, you're depriving him from the basic rights. Look, a huge percentage of the church going people in the States, they say up to 60%. They have outside marriage relationship. The president of the United States had outside marriage relationship with the interns in his office. It happens why? Wife, maybe wife is busy. Maybe he's uh, exposed to a lot of fitting and he doesn't have an access to fulfill this desire in a lawful fashion. If he fulfilled it in a lawful fashion, he wouldn't even think about it again. So you need to think about it this way. You want to preserve your marriage. You want to protect your husband. You want to keep the integrity of your family. You have to understand that, that there are rights and obligations. And they go both ways. And one thing I want to add is the relationship between husband and wife should be so beautiful that these things should be understood. Many marriages, in fact, let's be fair. I think most of the marriages, they have a good understanding to say, you know what, uh, the integrity the wife is not feeling well or she's tired or she has a headache or there is something or you know she you can sense that maybe she's sad about something happened I mean someone passed away something and so there should be a good understanding where there doesn't even need to be a deep discussion about this and Consider normally that, that happens occasionally mm. not on a regular basis yes and that happens so, occasionally but mm. the understanding is so beautiful in fact people actually know that you know what I, I, uh, they know their spouses without going into details. So it's good to have such a beautiful relationship that we don't even get the, to the, the complaints that we receive. To the war. Let, let All of share, us you, is yeah, simply sorry. the complaints that we normally receive is when, uh, when one of the spouses, mainly uh, the wife, is normally saying no, no, no for no reason, mm. not showing a reason. So in this case, the husband is upset. The husband is looking for a way to fulfill this desire, even in an unlawful uh, fashion. So as we speak about the, the wife have rights and the husband have to take the initiative to fulfill those rights, likewise, the wife should keep in mind that the man have uh, rights and those rights are very pressing, very pressing. So if she's not able to, honey, tonight I have migraine. Would you please excuse me tonight? No problem. At least we'll cuddle and I'll give you ruqya, whatever. But if it is something that habitual, every night, every night, every night, you know, in this case, uh, it becomes really problematic. You know, in, in counseling, when I counsel couples in particular, where the husband is addicted to pornography and the wife caught him in the act, then the jealousy factor becomes absolutely I mean, disturbing to the wife. What do you mean the jealousy factor? Like now she thinks that he's cheating on her. Okay. So she wanted to be involved in every you know aspect of his life, including satisfying him sexually. Mm. And when, when the wives join the husbands during the recovery, I have noticed the improvement of the men. So because now the, the wives are really offering 100% support in that area. But I want to say one thing, Habibi, to be honest with you, Whenever one of the spouses, which is mainly the husband, is addicted, no matter what the wife does, mm. she will never satisfy him. Simply because she's modest and she can never compete with these prostitutes and with the, those who are in the industry. So that's why we, 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 we gotta keep in mind that those who are into this kind of addiction, they need treatment, yeah. they need counseling, 
and this is not a matter of a week or two or a month or two. This yeah, is a long-term treatment long time. in order to detox. Yeah, I was just referring to the fact that once the wife becomes really supportive in this regard, mm. in, in whatever way possible, uh, and of course we, we go through a lot of treatment programs, then the husbands start to become at least better than before in terms of their addictive yeah. behavior. You know, the other way, mm. when, when a woman is addicted to porn, and a lot of the times you find a man who is not on that path with her, if he catches her basically or sees that, he is less tolerant yeah, by is, far of it. her uh, misgivings yeah. than if in it were the cases, other way around. Is, it ended in divorce. It ends in, in divorce, divorce because he just can't take it. Yeah. So it's a tough one because obviously as much as we... Allah, may Allah protect us. Yeah, may Allah may protect, Allah protect As much us. as we're speaking about the rights of both. Mm -hmm. But like I said, men are wired differently. Say what you want, they are wired differently. Yeah, absolutely. So the way a man processes things and the way a woman processes this type of thing is very different. That's why we need to... Neither of them is wrong, but the, it's just the way that they, they process this type of thing. That's why women will never ever, ever understand why men do certain things. And men will never, ever understand why women do certain things, except by being told through revelation. Honestly, so if it is mentioned in the Quran, this is what a woman uh, deserves, and this is, you just have to surrender to it, listen to it, and understand that's Allah, the maker, is telling you, this is how I made them, you better do this, and this is how I made them, you better not do that. Yeah, let's, so uh, uh, yes. wow. <laughs> <laughs> let's not uh, forget about the power of supplication. Wow. Even with regards to the sexual relations, mm -hmm. yani the beautiful supplication in Surah Al-Fuqan, which is perceived as one of the traits of the true devout servants of the Almighty Allah, Rahman. Mm -hmm. They uh, regularly pray, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ أَمَامٍ What is قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ? peace of mind, coolness of one's eyes, comfort, yes. All of that also is applicable in the condition of the sexual relations. So when I say this dua, it's not only about having a righteous spouse and a goodly offspring, but it covers every level. An obedient wife, uh, a very super nice husband, uh, can afford to take care of a family, satisfying his wife in bed, and she sits fine him in bed. They have come an understanding. When he comes home, like he set his foot in safe heaven, you know, this is a happy. barakah. He exactly. feels very happy. He can't wait to get back home. That's why the term, Qurra Ta'ayin. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. When I walk into Allah. my house, this is heaven. Allah. This is safe heaven. Allah. The world outside is like a, a wild zoo. I can't wait to get home. Why? Because I have a spouse whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her for me. I have kids whom Allah made them for me and Allah have made me for my wife and my kids like you say safe haven what a beautiful word yeah. what a beautiful yeah. word so now we want to shift to the ethical boundaries regarding sexual activities in Islam are there any prohibited acts that husbands and wives who are watching us now should be careful of when one, it comes to intimate relations. One thing that is undisputedly disallowed in Islam is anal penetration. That's one thing that Islam disallows completely and there is no difference of, of opinion among Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah in this regard. So that is undebated in the circles in, 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 uh, for Muslims actually. And the sisters are allowed to say no because there is no any obedience to any created being on the account no. of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, if that is happening, you can end up uh, nullifying that marriage. You can you can go and, and get it nullified. You, you could do that because that is a major thing. You know what? I'm just thinking right now that there is a person need to speak about divorce in a separate, lengthy, not one episode, maybe multiple episodes. Yeah. Because uh, divorce sometimes is perceived as, no, 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 this is uh, similar to death. But it could be a solution sometimes, yes, yes. like in your case. When the man is saying, if you don't do this, I'm going to commit adultery, I'm going to have a, do as you wish. Yeah. I'm not going to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, watch porn with you, or give you an access to the rear orifice in order to satisfy your ill and sick desire. 
you know, even if it comes to divorce. So I had a case where there was a guy like this and uh, he, at, there came a point when he started beating his wife and she built the courage to tell the family that this is what has happened. They got me involved in that. And uh, the guy, when I, when I spoke to him, he was so angry and defensive and he told me, uh, she's still my wife and I am demanding my right of intimacy to her now. And if you are a true scholar, you will tell her not to deny me my right. But they were on the verge of breakup and divorce because of something that has been happening for a while. And it was so crazy and his physical abuse, so many other forms of abuse and whatever. So in that particular case, when the welly and the father is now involved and the families are involved, she doesn't, she can actually say, look, this marriage is almost terminated and I'm not going to, you know, give myself because his idea, according to her, at this point, he just wanted to make her pregnant. Mm. And he said so that she, she will, you know, you know what, it changes the whole uh, divorce thing once there is a child involved. Not to say that it's, we were talking about it earlier today with you in, uh, uh, when we were going down somewhere that some people, they say, let's stay together for the kids. That's a topic on its own, yes. mm -hmm. you know, but uh, some men like to use this when they know that they are nailed. They want to impregnate so that they can hold back. So in that particular case... Or the case, other way around. Yeah, or the other way around. Yeah. Seek help from the scholars to know the ruling in your particular case because there could be just an exemption for this mm -hmm. while the discussion is hot about divorce. The, the, and you know what? There is a hadith in this yes. regard. Ha, the Prophet sallallahu said, how could a husband abuse his wife physically or beat her? Darb al -abdi, and then, then he demands her to sleep with him. Yes. Oh, yes. It's called make a love. Mm. You know, how could you abuse your spouse, upset him or her, beat him or her, and say, let's have sex? Mm. Yes, that's it's a completely very important... Incompatible. This is taking into consideration the, the, the emotions of the person to a degree in this particular way. So you're using it as a tool of hate, not of love. Yeah. You, usually intimacy is a tool of love, expression of love. Here it's a punishment. It's like hate because you know, you know what's going on here and you can't just come and impose. So in that particular instance, there, there are rules and regulations we need to become acquainted with. Desires are something like very broad like when we say to satisfy him or to satisfy her to what extent people will go beyond the satisfaction because sometimes they say she never satisfy me like, what do you mean by that let, let me tell you one thing the sexual relationship is something that you do not need to learn about or mm. you do not require an education basically our parents grandparents great great grandparents never heard about sexual education mm. But all what we hear about nowadays is simply due to the widespread of the porn materials. That becomes okay? the primary education. And that's why I said no matter what a decent, chaste wife would do to please a husband who serves and watches porn, she will never satisfy him. Why? Because she, not, she cannot compete with the filthy girls and what they do. And that's why this is where counseling steps in. Because a counselor will be able to detect from the first sight what is happening. Mm. So you will take the husband on the side or the wife aside and discuss with them whether they have, you know, some sort of addiction, whether they have been watching this or that, uh, and what makes them reach their climax mm. in order to, 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 to close the gap between the couple. Sometimes, it is not uh, it, it is not something that you can close. It is so wide. The gap is so huge. Why? Because somebody went so far, so extreme in the sexual imaginary uh, because of watching whatever. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you cannot demand from the wife in this case particularly. So I'd like uh, a porn star. She would never. Yeah. And would one quick thing, mentioning counseling, very important, but if you go to the wrong counselor, they can send you up the wrong tree. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I know of people who've gone to, uh, you know, those who don't know the deen of Allah. Non-Muslim counselors or secular counselors. And they have told them, oh, but there's nothing wrong in this. There's nothing enjoy wrong in it. it. Yeah, just enjoy it. It's fine. And both yeah. of you, both of you, both of you could actually watch something to arouse you together. No, there, there was some someone, astaghfirullah al -Azim, but one guy actually told me that the counselors suggested they involved a third party in their... Well, in their they and, do. And, and this is what they do. We, we are, this is so, unplugged as usual. Yeah, but I, I got a happening. shock. I said, you know what, I can't believe it. So this guy said, no, that's what they told me. Yeah. They said that to add this and that, and, you know, and, uh, and, you know, we thank Allah. Allah has kept it an ibadah. As much as it's intimacy you're going to enjoy, you know, you might lose yourself in that moment with the right person. Alhamdulillah, it's an act of worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen all of us. May He keep us on the straight and narrow. May He forgive our shortcomings. May He make us chaste and clean people. And may He uh, allow us to nurture children who will also be, inshallah, on the straight and narrow. And may we invest in our families in such a big way that we see the fruits of it by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have we, forgot, have we forgotten any, any rights, responsibilities, roles regarding sexual assault? Maybe you can have another episode. Allahu Let's based, see the feedback from this on one. The feedback and the right. questions. So basically, our dear viewers, um, this episode is not to be a trend. How many millions will get to watch it? The Meshaykh are talking about taboo and anal penetration and... and Wallahi, it is for the sake of Allah. Actually, it took us a while to come up with... Uh, this to say let's sit and record it because it's difficult to strike that balance between you know like I say feminism and misogynism and like I say this extreme and that extreme the people who don't have it at all and those who go wild and start doing things that are really you know beyond what Allah has uh, laid down it was very difficult but with that I we hope that there has been benefit guess what let me share something with you we started um, our very first episode or session of unplugged a year ago and it was here in indonesia uh, and and now as we commemorate the remembrance of the first episode i'd like to tell you that every single time that we record an episode of unplugged we have no clue what we'll be talking about yes, what will be addressed we say bismillah and then we, we start have so many questions today but except we few, yeah. <laughs> except in this episode as i said it was as a result of seeing two extremes, too many extremes online, misleading people sometimes in the name of religion, in the name of uh, feminism, in the name of whatever, uh, the rights of this or that. And that's why we decided this is our duties towards the Muslim community. And uh, whenever we receive your feedback and we also receive your questions, we'll be more than happy to have another edition exactly. or a follow-up session inshallah. So I thought of one quick thing okay. Okay. and it's, it, it's literally something that's Possible. explosive. It's explosive. Okay. You and I know that homosexual acts are haram in Islam, no. okay. right? And nothing will change that until the day of Qiyamah. Allahu Akbar. If someone is gay, mm. they should own up and they should not destroy someone's life by marrying them just for the sake of their parents. This is where oh. marriage becomes yes. haram. 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 Because there are so many cases of people who are uh, that way. And you know what? One is dealing with that. But two is why punish someone else's child just because your parents or your family or the culture or you just want to show reasons. the social reasons that I have a trophy wife and you've never ever touched her. And this is why it is a red flag. If you are married, go out on honeymoon, come back and the guy has not yet attempted to engage in sexual relations that is a red flag in fact it's a huge flag so you need to be you need to be bold enough to tell your folks listen this guy hasn't touched me and the folks will probably figure out something's wrong and then they can take it from there if need be you can get out of the marriage very early on in it i told you brothers and sisters including the parents they need also education in this regard because a lot of sisters a lot of sisters come and complain to us so when I say, what about your parents? What about your mom? She says, I've been talking to them and say, just be patient. Hmm. Be patient for what? Passive. The man is not a man. The husband is not a man. But the parents look at him as, you know, having a decent job, good position, driving a nice car. So they asked 
their door to be patient in this kind of oppression, they are wallahi blameworthy. As we say, to be continued, inshallah. Once we receive your feedback and your questions, we'll be more than happy to face another session. Oh, inshallah. there is a lot to talk about. Wallahi, we should, Wallahi. we should have, inshallah. I don't know when would be the next time to meet, inshallah. Is it the inshallah, bi idnillah. May Allah. I think we're going to Zanzibar, inshallah. Yes, yeah, so in inshallah. about a month or two, inshallah. Ta'ala, we'll that means the next session will be in the forest, in the wildlife. <laughs> in, in, in what life, Sheikh? <laughs> <laughs> but, but what we spoke about might be uh, might appear to some people as really confronting because the the taboo nature nature that we spoke about earlier but it is absolutely necessary and there is no uh, guess what guess what if you feel offended turn it off yeah. don't watch this episode oh. watch watch qiyamul layl uh -huh. watch the uh, virtue of fasting voluntary fasting w watch some any of our you know, we, we have... <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you something very interesting is, like you say, it's not confrontational. It's not attacking anyone. It is the Islamic balance that Allah has blessed us with. Allah tells you, listen, we created you. We know what you need. Hey, so this is the balance. Wait a minute. Shall we uh, label it 18 plus? No, it's okay. You know, nowadays <laughs> people... No, 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 for kids. No, I think yeah. on, on the topic, uh, on the topic, it's, yeah, let's put it's, it's, no, it's not thing. made for kids. It's yes. normally, that's yes. that's the way. But, but I want to tell you something. The kids today, the age of eight and nine, well, they already know more than what we well, spoke well, about today. Spoke about and then before. 10, 12, 14, in some countries, only Allah knows what goes on. And, and if, we were to, if we were to label it 18 plus, it would be watched mainly by under 18. <laughs> yes, yes. Allah protect us all. Wallahi, the intention is to educate our brothers and sisters because as I mentioned earlier, these issues destroy marriages. Even though there is no divorce sometimes, but the marriage itself is dead. A lot of oppression, a so lot of zulm and injustice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all Amen. to the true path and enable us to practice Islam to the best of I want to look at the camera and say to all the spouses out there, please go out of your way to ensure that you have fulfilled the rights of your spouse in this regard. Go out of your way and make sure you invest in this relationship. That's ibadah. Yes, and it will blossom. It will really blossom. Many people invest outside. Invest in and see what happens. It will change your whole life and you become a person who enjoys all other ibadah because you are fulfilling it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and co being considerate of the other party. Either way, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant ease and goodness and may Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, brother Sheikh Wa'il Ibrahim. Uh, Allah grant you goodness. Inshallah ta'ala will talk to you soon from Africa. Bi'idhnillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum as-salam.